while the team structure and culture itself was slowly evolving, our on-field success was primarily driven by the sheer talent and spirit of uniquely talented players unearthed in recent times. Players like Murali Sanat, Aravinda, Mahela, and Lasit Malinga. Although our school cricket structure is extremely strong, our club structure remains archaic. With players diluted among 20 clubs, it does not enable the national coaching staff to easily identify and funnel talented players through for further development. The lack of competitiveness of the club tournament does not lend itself to producing hardened first-class professionals. Various attempts to change this structure, to condense and improve, have been resisted by the administration and the clubs concerned. <clears throat> The main reason for this being that any elected cricket board that offended these clubs runs the risk of losing their votes come election time. At the same time, the instability of our administration is a huge stumbling block to the rapid face change that we need. Indeed, it is amazing that the, despite this system, <coughs> we are able to produce so many world-class cricketers. Nevertheless, despite abundant natural talent, we need to change our cricketing structure. We need to be more Sri Lankan rather than selfish. We need to condense our cricketing structure to ensure that the best players are playing against each other at all times. We need to do this with an open mind, allowing both innovative thinking and free expression in some, reasons, in some respects, we are doing that already, especially our coaching department, which is actively searching for unorthodox talent. We have recognized and learned that our cricket is stronger when it is free-spirited, and we therefore encourage players to express themselves and be open to innovation. There was a recent case where the national coaches were tipped off <clears throat> to the case of a six-foot-tall volleyball player. He apparently, when viewed by the district coach of the region, ambles up to the wicket off about four steps, jumps four to five feet high in the air in a, a smash-like leap, and delivers the ball while in midair. His feet are within the two bowling creases, popping in the ball increase, but after his delivery, he lands quite a ways down the wicket. <laughs> now the district coach found this <clears throat> very, very interesting and unique. So he thought, well, let's have, a, let's have a trial. So he takes a video camera along and gets this volleyball player who has never bowled before for any lengthy period to bowl for half an hour in the district nets. He does quite a good job half an hour of jumping high and delivering a cricket ball quite well with good direction and the video sample is then sent back to our cricket board. The national coaches there also find it interesting and they say, well, let's call him to Colombo for a trial. Four days later they make a call and the volleyball player answers the phone call from a hospital bed. And when invited, he says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't move. I've never bowled for 30 minutes. I strained my back. <laughs> so the search for gold in that, instant, in that particular instance did not come to fruition. There was another case where there was a letter postmarked from a, a, a distant village where the writer claimed to be the fastest undiscovered bowler in Sri Lanka. Upon further inquiry, it was found that the letter was written by a teenage Buddhist monk who proceeded to give a bowling demonstration dressed in his flowing saffron robes. In Sri Lanka, cricket tempts even the most chaste and holy. <laughs> if we are able to seize the moment, then the future of Sri Lanka's cricket remains very bright. I pray we do because cricket <clears throat> has such an important role to play in our island's future. Cricket played a crucial role during the dark days of Sri Lanka's civil war, 
a period of enormous suffering for all communities. But the conduct and performance of the team will have even greater importance as we enter a crucial period of reconciliation and recovery. An exciting period where all Sri Lankans aspire to peace and unity. It is also an exciting period for cricket where the reintegration of isolated communities in the north and the east open up new talent pools. The spirit of cricket can and should remain the guiding force for good within our society, providing entertainment and fun, but also a shining example to all of how we should approach our lives. The war is now over. Sri Lanka looks towards a new future of peace and prosperity. I am eternally grateful for this. It means that my children will grow up without war and violence being a daily part of their lives. They will learn of its horrors, not firsthand, but perhaps in history class or through conversation, for it is important that they understand and appreciate the great and terrible price our country and our people paid for the freedom and security they now enjoy. In our cricket, we display a unique spirit, a spirit enriched by lessons learned from a history spanning over two and a half millennia. In our cricket, you see the character of our people, our history, culture, tradition, our laughter, our joy, our tears, our regrets, and our hopes. It is rich in emotion and talent. My responsibility as a Sri Lankan cricketer is to further enrich this beautiful sport, to add to it and enhance it and leave it a richer legacy for the cricketers to follow. I will do that, keeping paramount in my mind my Sri Lankan identity. Play the game hard and fair and be a voice with which Sri Lanka can speak proudly to the world. My loyalty will be to the ordinary Sri Lankan fan, the 20 million hearts beating collectively as one to our island rhythm, filled with an undying and ever loyal love for this, our game. Fans of different races, castes, ethnicities, and religions who together celebrate their diversity by uniting for cricket, our common national cause. Those fans are my foundation. They are my family. I will play my cricket for them. Their spirit is the true spirit of cricket. With me are all my people. I am Tamil, I am Sinhalese, I am Muslim and Berger. I am a Buddhist, I'm a Hindu, a follower of Islam and Christianity. But above all, today and always, I will be proudly Sri Lankan. Thank you.